Welcome, I'm Melinda Akimami. Tonight, Governor Nasser El Rafai of Kaduna State accuses the National Assembly of being a stumbling block to the government's anti-corruption fight. Federal government reaffirms plans to complete repair works on the Abuja airport by April the 19th. Members of the Bring Back Our Girls group begin activities marking the third year anniversary of the abduction of the Chibok girls. And at least three people die in a suspected terror attack in the Swiss capital, Stockholm. And on business news tonight, Minister of Budgets and National Planning says Nigeria's economic recovery program reflects vision on exchange rate and 41 items. And in sports news, Liverpool and Senegalese forward Sadio Mane rolled out for the remainder of the season after he sustained a knee injury a week ago. And from Abuja, Federal High Court Abuja fixes May 12th to deliver judgment in the case against the indicted INEC staff in the Rivers rerun election, who insist the case should be heard in River State. Tonight from Kaduna State, where Governor Nasiru Erufai has taken a swipe at members of the National Assembly for what he describes as stalling the anti-corruption crusade of the federal government. The governor, who was speaking at the closing ceremony of a retreat for top management staff of the National Assembly, says the federal lawmakers have not only been acting as an opposition to the government, but has also refused to make its budgetary process transparent. Assembly as is seen as an opposition to the fight against corruption. That is the view of Kaduna State Governor Nasir El Rufai at a retreat organized for top management of the National Assembly holding in the state. I'd like that we give uh, the governor of Kaduna State and the governor also accused the National Assembly of not supporting the fight against corruption by the government of President Muhammadu Buhari. Do not accept excuses. He goes further to accuse the lawmakers of shrouding in secrecy matters affecting their budget. I can tell you that the National Assembly, particularly the Senate, is seen as one of the fighters of the war against corruption. And this image has to be worked on. More transparency in your budgets, for instance. Nobody knows your budget. Nobody knows how much you get paid. So. Publications are made about your salaries and allowances that I do not believe are true, but cannot be defended because there is no transparency about your budgeting or your personal cost and so on and so forth. The Speaker of the House of Representatives, however, disagrees with Governor El Rufai on the fight against corruption. We have already instructed the leadership of the bureaucracy to publish the budget details of the National Assembly. And I would like to challenge him to champion this call for transparency on budgetary, budgetary process from the National Assembly to other arms of government. Judiciary, first, we want to see clearly too how chief executives of states how they are paid, what do they spend monthly as security votes? And if they can jointly publish, what happens to local government funds under their jurisdiction? Surely the last hasn't been heard of this matter. With several groups seeking transparency in the budget of the National Assembly, this latest challenge from the Kaduna State Governor may just add another dimension to the debate. Renowned professor of economics, Professor Patutomi, has blamed the backwardness of the country on the lack of vision and absence of consultation in the nation's budget processes. Professor Otomi, who was a guest speaker at the Budget Roundtable Seminar at Unizik Business School, Oka, trailed the nation's problems from the military era to over-dependence on oil and bad leadership. Continue to do the wrong things. And we lost talk where we were. In fact, they, they made the Nigerian population think that if you can think something is wrong with you. And what is more important in this, this whole thing, 
the instrument of rigor that holds together that vision, that uh, generation of expenditure and power into revenue, is essentially the budget process. It is such an important process, but we do not take it seriously. What is needed is a complete reform of government in this country. Total. And it is because the goal is not clear. People get into government not knowing why they are there. It is, oh, it is nice, it is powerful, they will blow siren. We must get the narrative right, we get the issues right, we monitor, we evaluate, we hold people accountable. If you don't perform, there's consequence. If you perform, there is a war. The embattled Kano State federal lawmaker, Honorable Abdulmumin Jubin, has apologized for the opinions he shared on Twitter about President Muhammad Buhari's health status. The lawmaker, who arrived his home country of Kufa in Bibiji amidst chairs and arousing welcome from his supporters, says he was misunderstood on the statement where he asked that President Buhari resign. Honorable Jubrin says President Buhari remains a father to him and someone he truly believes in. He was suspended last year by the House of Representatives for blowing a whistle over the 2017, 2016 budget process. But the lawmaker addressed his supporters in the presence of the media earlier today. To my party leaders, friends, colleagues and supporters who expressed concern over my position or took offense at it, I sincerely apologize I sincerely apologize and if I may repeat for that comment I apologize to the party I apologize to the president and of course all well-meaning supporters of APC or beyond that expressed dissatisfaction at that uh, comment. And uh, I assure you that uh, I will always consider that in future. The Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, has expressed satisfaction with the ongoing rehabilitation at the Namdi Azikiwe International Airport, Abuja, saying the exercise is going according to plan. After inspecting the runway, Professor Oshibajo told journalists that the airport will be reopened on April the 19th. Vice President Yemi Oshibajo, accompanied by officials of the Federal Airport Authority, for the inspection of the runway of the Namdi Azikiwe International Airport in Abuja. The managing director of the Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria explains the design of the rehabilitation to the vice president. After the inspection, the vice president assures air travelers that the rehabilitation will be completed on schedule. So we are clearly on schedule, so we expect to see that this will be completed uh, well on schedule. But I, I, I don't think we should expect any delays whatsoever. And um, we have assurances from the contractors, assurances from the consultants that we are clearly on schedule. So by the 19th of April, this um, new run should be set. The managing director of the Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria outlines the level of work done, which is about 80 percent. The other critical elements of uh, work that we have, which is um, number one, uh, asphalt laying uh, is about 73 percent, airfield lighting uh, reinstallation is about 40 percent. Uh, 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 the next critical item is, of course, uh, marking, uh, which will start uh, on Monday, uh, but that one is not a critical element per se. And, uh, of course, uh, the general cleaning, at, at the end of the day, our regulator will have to come and certify what we have done. Then we'll be ready for opening on the 19th. The Inamde Azikiwe International Airport was closed on the 8th of March 2017 for rehabilitation of its runway. 
that counts down to the reopening of the airport on April 19, 2017, therefore begins with the visit of the Vice President. The Minister of Science and Technology, Dr. Obun Ayalnu, has hinted the realization of the recently launched Economic Recovery Plan on Technology. Dr. Onu, who was speaking at the closing ceremony of the Technology and Innovation Expo in Abuja, says plans are underway to ensure that the sector contributes significantly to the non-oil sector. For over five days, Nigerians with innovations came to showcase their inventions. And now, it's a wrap. But just before that, the Minister of Science and Technology, Dr. Ogbonaya Onu, showcases the rich potentials of Nigerians. He came into the venue of the gathering in a locally manufactured tricycle. Dr. Onu is certain that the sector is capable of improving the nation's economy through job creation. The challenging situation in our country is being reversed. With a strong and diversified economy driven by science, technology and innovation, under the leadership of President Muhammadu Buhari, our citizens will be happy and proud to remain at home to pursue their happiness and contribute meaningfully to national development. But in spite of the praises on the potentials in the sector, some experts believe that there are lapses that must be fixed if the sector is to contribute to the nation's development. Packaging is still a problem. Number six, we observe poor finishing in some of the projects. I guess this may be as a result of capacity, low capacity in uh, building machines and technologies. We also observed that most researchers are not very conscious of intellectual property protection. And it appears that this is an issue that needs to be addressed seriously by the ministry. There were awards and prizes for individuals and institutions who have done well in the field of science and technology. Is the Covenant University author? All these initiatives, according to the government officials, is in the interest of national development. Almost three years after the abduction of the Chibok schoolgirls from the government secondary school in Chibok, Bronu State, the Bring Back Our Girls group have gathered together to protest at the nation's capital, Abuja, kicking off a week-long slate of activities designed to raise fresh awareness on the need for the girls to return. The BBOG convener, Dr. Obi Izikwisili, says the federal government must do everything required to make this the last year the girls are still held in captivity. Three years since uh, our Chibok girls uh, have been in captivity, 195 of them remain in a um, terrorist enclave um, with the government that should be accounting for them, not giving any progress report whatsoever on the status of um, the negotiation for them that it had told the public was launched uh, after 21 returned. We were told last October, as were well, every uh, uh, one that had, uh, as was everyone that had followed the the abduction of these girls, that 83 of them would soon be released. Here we are, it's three years, and we don't have any one more girl other than the 24 that are, that, that are back. And so, as we enter into the third year of their captivity, we're saying enough is enough. Really, the government has absolutely no reason to not account for girls that were taken from our land, and girls that our government uh, says it is in 
touch with those that took them. What exactly is going on? This whole week um, uh, from today, the next uh, one, one week, would be devoted to a number of the activities that would remind the government of its constitutional responsibility to Ajibo girls and to the fact that we as a movement will not stop holding the government accountable for Ajibo girls. In part two, after the break, the chairman of the PDP Governors Forum, Ayodele Fayoshi, says the party's chairmanship crisis cannot be resolved until after the Supreme Court's ruling on the matter. That's in a moment. Join us again.